Hi all, what I'm going to be doing today is breaking down the timetable spreadsheet that we have here in front of us. So this spreadsheet uh, is a really great tool to help us timetable really easily. It sorts out all my color coding without worrying too much about small finicky details like when you're trying to timetable in a Word document or anything like that. All of my formatting here will be done for me. So let's go straight into it. This timetable is designed to be super flexible, which means that if you have multiple periods in a day, uh, that are different from another school, you're able to enter those in. So we'll start with that. I'm going to be walking you through an example of my particular timetable, and I'll, I'll go through how we can set this up, but it'll be similar if you have a five period day or a seven period day. I'm going to pick that we have six periods in my day. What's also nice is I've allowed the flexibility of your own naming conventions. So if you call your pastoral classes pastorals, then that's totally fine. You could call them mentor groups, tutor groups, or connect groups. So in my example, again, I'm going to be using the term pastoral um, and clicking on that. And then you might also not have a specific period for that pastoral lesson. So in this case here, I've got three options. If you don't have an explicit period for that, it fits into your normal timetable, you can click the I don't have one option. Or if it's before period one, you can select that. Or if it's before recess, you can select that as well. So in my example, our pastoral classes are before period one, so it's going to add in an extra row when I go to my timetable to slot that in. Now looking at the left hand side here, this is where we're going to start putting in our classes and our different responsibilities. So all of these different colour boxes help you pick the colour that you want to represent each different class. Okay, so for example here I've got that really nice dark, well sort of light dark blue, that represents class uh, 7a. Okay, my orange represents year 9 and that nice pastel green represents year 10. I've put in a few extras here as well. I'm going to talk about this one because that's quite nifty later on, being able to block out or black out uh, certain sections of your timetable. For example, in my school we don't have a Wednesday period 3, so we want to black out that cell completely. And I'll show you how to do that. We can do that by using this reference here. You'll also see that I haven't included a few. I'm not a fan of this cyan blue here, and also that grey. I'm not a fan of that one in particular, so I'm picking not to use those. Now, if you have two Year 7 classes, you might be able to say Year 7B, or whatever you'd like to name those. Now, on the right-hand side, after I've labelled all of the different classes I want to represent in my timetable, on the right-hand side, I'm going to select their location. So this one is held in E8B. And you can see I've got different locations for all of those. Okay, so on the right hand side here as well, uh, you've got this big blue box. This walks me through the written down instructions. There's only one thing I haven't really addressed in this part of the timetable, and it is the room editor. We're going to co go back to that at later parts of this video to show you what that actually represents, because that's a really nifty tool, because not all of your classes are going to be in these rooms. Sometimes you might have a class that is always in the same room, but we're going to find out later on that that's actually not always the case. So we've got an editing ability to adjust that. The next thing we need to do, and this is probably the most time consuming thing, and what's quite nice is you only have to do it once for your school, and then it is done and you can use this year on year. So that's a really nice little nifty system. It's set up, I told the spreadsheet that I wanted my pastoral period before period one. So let's pop that in there. All right, I've got two lunches, one recess, and I've got sections for after school and before school, which will be smaller in the timetable as well, because we don't frequently have after school classes or before school classes every day. Okay, so what I've done here is this allows me for every single period to input a set of times. So I've put that one from 8.30 to 8.39 is when our pastoral lessons take place. But what you'll notice is that's different for a Friday. And on a Wednesday, we've got different times as well. So go through there and put in your different times. It allows you to have those different times representing, uh, you know, different days and different periods. So not, uh, you know, your, your stock standard timetabling tool here. It gives me the ability to individually adjust these things. Now, what I've done here is I've copied this column because on Tuesdays and Thursdays, those times work out to be exactly the same. Okay, so once you've got that, you can copy and paste different days. If all of your days are exactly the same, copy and paste all of them. And it's really nice and quick doing that copy and paste if you don't have those small adjustments to make. Okay, so we've done our school bell times. Now you're welcome to change these for whatever 
class as you like. Now, let's move on to the scheduled classes. This is where we start inputting when I actually have my classes. So this is what your timetable I've got, week B here. This is my blank canvas to start inputting classes. So you can see that I've got these little drop down menu tools here. All right, so I click on a cell. So if in period two on a Monday, I want to drop it down and it's giving me all of the options that I put on that setup page. Okay, so I might have a year seven A class there. Okay, Wednesday in the pastoral period, I have my pastoral lesson there. Okay, so I'm able to do that. Now I've actually pre-done my week A's so that we can see what that looks like in the timetable without having to watch me do that in the video. What's really nice about this, this section of the spreadsheet is as soon as I have a change to my classes, so that might happen during the year, my classes might change. Um, if that happens during the year, essentially all I have to do is go to that class and say, actually, I don't have a year 7A class there anymore. I've got a year 12 class. Pop that change in and bam, you've saved so much time worrying about formatting and rechanging your ordinary standard timetable. This does this for me. Now, you'll also notice that I specified before that on Wednesdays, we don't actually have a period free. So I've popped in that little no lesson tool. You might remember from before, I'll go back. No lesson turns the cell completely black. It blanks it out really nicely. So if, I, if I'm missing a period, some people don't have pastoral periods every single day. So I could even do that for Tuesday and Thursday pastoral lessons. So you could say there's no actual pastoral lesson there. Okay. And so what that's going to do on the timetable is it's going to block it out completely. So let me show you what this looks like finally on the timetable. Okay, so you can see that all of my year 12 classes have color coded themselves based on the color that I picked on the setup page. All right, and same with all of the other classes. You can see how that blacked out effect has worked. All right, so that blackout effect means that it's pretty much saying that that period doesn't exist on your timetable. It's a really nice way of, again, adding that customization that a lot of online tools don't give me. I've also put in that I have some duties. All right, so we can see that the recess and lunch periods, uh, they're thinner than the others, and that's because we don't put a room space in there or the room location in there. So we've got a duty there and a duty there, and that color codes really nicely. I picked red to represent that, and this is the format that we get. Down here, this is a blank version, right? Where I didn't put too many values in. That's because when we go all the way back to scheduled classes, my week B, I didn't put any values in there. Okay, so that's my blank version. And again, once I start putting values in, so let's say I'm gonna put a value in for Thursday period three, I'm gonna say that I have a U7 B class there. You can see it's automatically populated that and color coded it for me. So that's a really great way of you being able to access a really easy formatting timetable, a self-formatting timetable. All right, now the very last thing that I wanna show you is the room editor. Now, what this does is it automatically inputs, this spreadsheet automatically inputs the room location that I put in to begin with. Up in the setup page, I said that each class had one specific room. Now that's not always the case if you teach multiple classes, um, your school might not be able to facilitate giving you one specific room. So that's when we're going to add, go back to the setup page and we're going to turn this room editor feature to yes. Okay, so it says access room editor. Yes, I want to access the room editor. Now the bottom of this page where I'm navigating, these are called worksheets by the way, the bottom of the page where I'm navigating between worksheets, you can see that it has one more tab there. When I say no, that's gone. When I say yes, that's right there. Okay, so this is my room editor. Now this allows me to make individual rooming adjustments based off the classes that I have in those rooms. Now, it is something important to say that if you are redoing your timetable, it's important to come back here and reset this page. Okay, so you just click this button here, that's a button, you click reset, and it will reset it to back to your standard timetable. And that way, if I remove my classes and start from scratch, all of the all of the class room locations will also start from scratch there as well. Okay, now this is saying that this is the location for all of the classes that has been that have been automatically updated. Okay, so here I actually want to make a few changes. Like this one, this class here on Tuesday period three will actually 
that changed locations to Y4B. All right, and over here, that's not in R351. That's actually, oh, sorry, we're just going to make an adjustment and say that's actually in R348, just like that. Okay, now if I check Tuesday period 3 and Thursday period 3 now on the timetable, let's see, Tuesday period 3, you can see that it's changed, and Thursday period 3, you can see that that has also changed. So this room editor allows me to make individual adjustments if I'm not in the same classroom for every single lesson. So last thing, if I wanted to reset that, I'm just going to click the reset button and you'll see these two values change. They've gone back to the original values. Now, if I wanted to reset the spreadsheet because I'm starting a new year, all you have to do is go back, delete the classes that I've popped in, in the schedule classes worksheet. So I can delete all of those by selecting them and clicking delete. Okay, we'll see that the timetable has gone back to blank. The room editor has, I've clicked reset, so there's nothing in there. My school bell times, they can stay the same because again, I'm moving on to the next year and you can restart your setup page. Okay, so if you have any questions or if you want to report an issue with it, you can click on this button here and that will send us an email as well. Thanks for watching.